Now, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study in Faith and Victory Church. Praise God. Tonight we're going to be teaching um, on our covenant of prosperity. And as many of you know, there's difficult economic times abounding around people. Uh, we're facing things, and it's not just a localized economy thing. It is a worldwide issue. And, and I know certain things have to come to pass before the end. But for the believer, for the Christian, we, we can walk in the blessings of the Lord in the midst of famine, in the midst of financial famine in the midst of drought and it's the natural drought financial drought spiritual drought we can still walk in the blessings and power of God amen praise God so let's look at Deuteronomy um, 28 12 to start with hallelujah God throughout the word plainly shows us his will towards his covenant people having a surplus of prosperity the blessing says this the blessing says this. It says that the Lord shall open to you his good treasury. Hallelujah. God wants to open unto you his what? His good treasury. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 12. Uh, we really help if I was at the right. There we go. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, or treasury as one translation says, the heaven to give the rain into thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Notice here it talks about the rain. What's that talking about? It's talking about harvest. It's talking about harvest. And understand it says here that God will give the rain unto thy land in his season. When you sow into the kingdom of God, when you tithe and then you sow offerings, you're sowing seed. And God says in his season he will bring rain on your seed. And you will have what? He'll bless all the work of your hand. And you'll lend a many and not borrow. You're going to have a, um, and then he goes on verse 13, says you'll make you the head, not the tail. You'll be above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. Now he does go on and say, obviously, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. We have to be doers of the word. We understand that. That is just a given in our walk with the Lord. Amen. Our walk with the Lord is, is a walk of keeping his word, doing this. We're not earning, we're not earning salvation by keeping his word. That's what we do. That's what we should be doing. We should be keepers of the word of God just as Christians. Amen. Not because we don't, we're afraid we're going to go to hell if we don't, or we're afraid that, you know, we'll get sick if we don't. That just should be how we live as a believer. Why? Because God's Word. His Word is food for your soul. Amen? All right. And so but he says here, he'll open unto thee his good treasure, or his treasury how? By giving, uh, causing the rain to get, the, the heaven to give rain in his season. God wants to bless you. Everybody say, God wants to bless me. God. Say, God wants to bless me. Point yourself right there on the, on the internet. God wants to bless me. Say it. Hallelujah. Go ahead, church. God wants to bless me. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said that, you listen, understand, you know, these are some principles that, you know, we, we've gone over and over for years. And yes, they, and especially if we were teaching a very real elementary class, and we're not going to do that tonight, but we understand he can't water seedless ground and get anything. Does that make sense? You can go out there and till up a garden all day long, fertilize it, put water on it, let the sun come out, and if there's no seed in the ground, guess what? Ain't nothing coming up. Okay? Does that make sense? He says here he's going to bless your land and give you rain in the season. What? To that what you sown, to the seed that's been sown. you got to sow seed. If you're going to walk in prosperity, you're going to have to sow things into the ground. Amen? But we have a, co listen, so a covenant, I'm talking about, so this is our covenant prosperity. Covenant always deals with a Godward side and a manward side. Amen? God's going to send the rain, but you've got to plant the seed. He says, he goes on and says here, and he'll bless all the work of your hand. If you're not planting, you're not going to grow. Simple as that. So don't expect, you know, well, praise God, Lord, send the rain on my heart and bring my harvest. What harvest? On what? What you sow. What you sow. You have to understand you've got to be involved in it. Amen. Say, understand you have to be involved. Say, I have to be involved. My side 
is to do my part. And then God will do his part. And we'll get the results he promised. Amen. All right. So he says here, uh, if, you, if you do this, He'll bring the blessing. He'll bring that blessing. He'll open up his treasury. You'll lend to me and not borrow. Meaning what? Meaning you're going to walk in an abundance of prosperity. God wants to bring the church. And listen, we, we've, uh, I know churches have gone under. Uh, church, uh, churches have faced difficult times. We have in the past four years. It's been tight. I mean, there's just been difficult times for people all over the place. But you know what? God's faithful. And we keep trusting the Lord that he brings us out. Hallelujah. He sustains us. He keeps us. Amen. Isn't that right? But God wants to bring us to where we're not going begging the banks. Uh, uh, we, we're in situations, and it's, it's funny how banks are. They won't loan you money when you need it. And then when you get a lot of money, they want you, they want bar, you to borrow the money from them. They want secure loans. You know, they want to be, be able to lend, loan you money knowing they're going to get it back instead of helping you when you need it. But that's, that's the way the world works. The world's not always fair. Amen? I said amen. The world's not always fair, but we don't have to worry about that. We're what we want with God. And God will bless if we'll do what he says in his word. God promised to make Abraham rich and the promise of Abraham is ours. Look over in Genesis chapter 17. I love these people who say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, you, wait, 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 wait. You, better, you better read your Bible better. You just can't go up there and find that dividing line where it says the New Testament of our Lord and Jesus Christ, boom, and everything else don't apply. People do it all the time. You got groups who do that when they say that healing doesn't belong to us or certain things don't belong to us because that's old covenant for the Jews. Well, I, I found a scripture one day that, found, that says that I'm a Jew inwardly. Amen. Hallelujah. So if it applies to the Jews, it applies to Ed. Amen. Amen. If that blessing applies to the Jews, it, apply, it applies to Ed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But look at Genesis chapter 17. We'll look down in verses 6 and 7. And God, God, that God's appeared to Abram here at 99. He says this in verse 6, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of these, and kings will come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their, I love this passage, in their generations for an everlasting, not, not, not in your generation, Abraham, your seed after thee, I will establish this as a covenant with them in their generations. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So God makes a promise to Abraham that he's going to establish his covenant with him and his seed after him. And what? <clears throat> For an everlasting, listen here, listen, I'm sorry. And it's the, after the end, their generations. Go over real quick to the book of Galatians. You kind of, maybe want to kind of hold in your place there in Genesis. We're going to get back over in the Old Testament again. Look at chapter 3 of G Galatians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had it marked in my other Bible. That's why I'm looking. I got a different Bible that I had. And uh, it's really highlighted. I draw the lines together and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Praise God. Verse 16. That's what I was looking for. See, my other Bible is highlighted, the star, and got circles around it, and then drawn over to verse 29. And I just picked up a different Bible on the way out tonight. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Well, didn't we just read there in, in, in Genesis 17, 6? That I'm going to make this an everlasting covenant with thee and thy seed after thee in their generation. Isn't that right? Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not... And to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. All right? That makes this a New Testament promise. 
I said, Amen. The blessing of Abraham, whatever God promised Abraham, is a New Testament promise just based on this because I see this Christ. But then we get, we get further clarity. In verse 29 it says, And if ye be Christ, possessive, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When? In their generation. So if it applied in first century church, it applies in 21st century church. If it applied in 28 AD, it applies in 2012 AD. I don't use CBE or CEB or BCE. There you go. BC and BCE. The godless left wing liberal national teachers uh, unions that have put in b before current era and current era into our books. They don't use B.C. and A.D. anymore. All your textbooks now have uh, B.C.E. before current era and C.E. current era removing before Christ and um, the Latin. Yeah, thank you. I'm not going to try to say it. In the year of our Lord. Yep. You go to college and get a textbook. It does no longer. It no longer says B.C. and A.D. And, and AD. It says C.B.E. and C.E. It's a little sneaky thing they did. Just a little sneaky thing they did. Anyway, hallelujah. We got kids who don't who even know what BC means anymore. Yeah. They'll think before current era. That was their church. That was a purpose. Sorry, there's a little soapbox journey there. Hallelujah. But look here. He says here in verse 16 that to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Everything God promised Abraham was promised to Abraham and his seed. When? In their generation. It's not, I love the fact God had that put in there. Amen. Hallelujah. In their generation. Meaning, yeah, I'm going to say it now, but it's going to apply to whoever is your seed four millennia from now, whenever it is, in their generation, this applies. Hallelujah. And you can have some bozo, some theological idiot who comes along and tries to say, well, that doesn't apply to us now. But then he comes up and says... And not the seeds as of many, but as of one, which is Christ. Well, see, it's just applying to Jesus. And then he comes to verse 29 and says, And if you belong to Christ, I'm going to say, because well, that's what possessive is, yeah. then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yeah. You can't get out of that one. Yeah. It belongs to us. Yeah. The blessing of Abraham belongs to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Glory to God. Isn't that good news? Amen. Now I'll establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and the generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land where art thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. I'll be their God. Amen. God covenant. Well, let's look over. Hold your place here in, in Galatians now. And let's run over to Romans 4. Let's run over to Romans 4. There went my notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I sure wish I brought my other Bible. Hallelujah. Where, where is that scripture at? All right, find it for me. Blessing, I will bless thee. And, uh, hmm? That's not Romans 4, is it? So, where is it? He spoke to Abraham, said, In blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Hebrews 4. Well, you don't have your notes and you're getting on a roll there. Your mind just does some, some funny things to you sometimes. Is it Hebrews 4? Dr. Maximus, rescue me here. Huh? 
What 22:17? Yeah. Okay, but I want the New Testament reference to this. Yeah. We'll look there. We'll go to Genesis 22:12 first. Why'd y'all take that down? I said, why'd y'all take that down? I hate it when this stuff happens. You said Genesis 22, 12 or 23, 12? 17. All right, and the angel of the Lord, verse 15, with God called unto Abram, Abraham out of the heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn to saith the Lord, for this, because th thou hast done this, thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply, the, uh, and, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and that thou, thy seed shall possess the gates of thine enemy. Amen. 6.14. I was looking at Romans 4, 16. Can you imagine how, how easy it is to get your th stuff mixed up? Verse 13 for, uh, of Je Hebrews 6. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And, after, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now the... the um, Weymouth translation says in blessing and in, 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 um, I will bless thee and bless thee and I will increase you and increase you. Amen. And after so he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. The Bible talks about the New Testament that those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. We have to understand there's a promise made to us by God, and it's in our generation. God promised, the blessing of Abraham is the blessing, uh, is the promise of blessing and increase, or blessing and multiplication. That is the promise to Abraham. The promise of blessing, increased blessing, and incre or multiplying and increase. A blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. Everybody say blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. And when he offered um, Isaac up on the altar, the, 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 when they left there, they named that place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Lord is our provision. He walked away with the covenant name of God, the Lord is your provision. And that promise of blessing and increase was to Abraham and his seed. And according to Galatians, that seed is not many, but as of one Christ. But if you belong to Christ, then it belongs to you. And I love this. I love it when he said it over in Genesis. In their generations. That, that, I mean, that's, that's Holy Ghost shouting ground. Because you can't, you can't say that was a dispensational truth for that time. He said it's in their generation. It doesn't matter what dispensation you're in. If, you're dispensa if you believe in dispensational truths and you're a dispensationalist, I mean, you can say, you come along and say, well, that was to Abraham's dispensation. He, God said in their generations. He spanned whatever excuse you could come up with to not get it. He spanned it by making it applicable to their generations. It belongs to you now. And not only that, he clarified that it belonged between Abraham and Christ, which was the seed. But if you belong to Christ, then it belongs to you. And according to Genesis, it doesn't matter when you, when you got saved, if it was 1st century, 20th century, 95th century, it was going to belong to you in your generation. So what? We have a covenant of prosperity. We have the covenant of prosperity that God gave to Abraham. Hallelujah. The covenant of prosperity, the covenant of blessing and increase. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now remember, Abraham was, was with Lot. Lot took off with him. Lot wasn't supposed to go. That was one of those things you shouldn't have done, but he did it anyway. You know, what, well, why, why? Because Lot, Lot lost his wife. Lot became a, a, a lunatic. He offered his daughters to the men to, to rape in order to keep them away from the angels. They had a bunch of homos there. They came out wanting to rape the angels. Now I'm going to tell you what would have happened had they tried. They'd have been cooked. Those angels would have slew the whole, the whole bunch right there on the spot. 
But Lot didn't. He was just being, he was being brain dead. Dysfunction at brain matter. Yeah. He says, here's my daughters. Take my daughters instead. That's a sick man. Yeah. I'm just saying. Anyway. But the blessing of Abraham was so strong that just because Lot was hanging out with him, he got in on it. It got so big, they came together and said, we can't dwell together, the land can't handle us. Now, apparently up until that time, nobody had that problem. But Abraham showed up, Lot was there under, under, the, under the shadow of his blessing, and it got so big that the, that the servants and the cattle and all the stuff they owned between the, two, between, between the two men was so great the land couldn't bear them. Now, I can tell you something. Now, let me say, let me say I'm going to make a spiritual principle here. And, and, and you, any of you that, you that believe you're called to ministry, anybody that's watching us that believe you're called to ministry, understand this. You can go sit in a certain ministry and think you're really something else, and all you're doing is sitting under the anointing of that ministry. You get out on your own, you'll find out what you got. And we found out what Lot had. A lot of people go and they go sit under a big ministry. They think they're some. They, they think they're really, they're really great, and people love them. Whatever. They get out and they don't find out that they were sitting under somebody else's covering. Lot was sitting under Abraham's covering. As soon as he got in the city, he got vexed. Hello, are you here? Became wicked, sin. Right, the Bible says it vexes his righteous soul daily, to the point he'd offer his doors to other men to keep. You know, yeah. that's vexed. Amen. So understand, God may have called you, but don't, don't think that the anointing you're sitting under is what you're walking in because on your own. And it's good to split a church and start your own. Tell everybody how great you are. You're better than the pastor. You're sitting under his anointing. Amen. It happens like people go to Tulsa and they go to, they go to you know, Bible school out there. I remember when I was like, man, you could just sit out there. It, it, was, it was almost easy to believe God on one sense. People think they're really struggling to believe God out there. I'm telling you, you get out on your own, you find out real quick if you're believing God or not. Yeah. You're sitting out there, you're sitting under the Raymond's anointing, or you're sitting under, you know, you're going to SCF, you know, Buddy Harris's church or whatever. You're going, you're sitting under some ministry, and you're sitting under their anointing and thinking you're really doing something. And you get home and you find out, my God, I got to actually believe now. And it's a different story. So what's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling, I'm preaching the truth. I'm giving the story, yeah. Understand, you're not some hot shot financially as a Christian. You're walking under the blessing of Abraham. Don't think you can do it without God. It will catch up with you. Now, I can tell you this. If you miss church two days or you go give the pastor a hard time and leave and go do whatever you want to do and you think you're really cool, it ain't going to happen overnight because, you know, the devil's not going to do that to you just because he doesn't want you to figure it out. But it's going to catch up with you. You, you what we walk in the prosperity of God. We don't trust the flesh. There's a, there's a scripture, and I, I'm trying to think of where it is right now. It says, we are the circumcision... We worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen? If you're going to walk in prosperity, put your trust in God. It, yeah, work, earn money, tithe and give. Hallelujah. Yeah, Philippians 3.3. 3. We are circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Know this, that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And here's the key, Old Testament scripture. And addeth no sorrow therewith. I can tell you, you go back, you look at people in our country. We got a lot of rich people in our country who've had nothing but sorrow with their money. And, and I'm not picking on anybody, but the Kennedys have had nothing but sorrow with their money. Name me one generation of Kennedys that hasn't had tragedy since they earned all their money bootlegging liquor. Name one generation that has had extreme tragedy. It's just been nothing but tragedy. There is sorrow with their wealth. Don't think that ill-gotten gain is prosperity of the Lord. It's not the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham will make you rich and add no sorrow with it. It'll be peace and tranquility in your home. Amen? What good does it do you to go out and make a million dollars and your kids' brains are fried on drugs? 
I went to high school with, a, with, a, with a, one of the brothers was my classmate. And his younger brother, I guess two, three years younger than us, um, was a glue sniffer. You know, take model glue, put it in the bag, sniff it. And it cooked his brain. The last years of his life were spent, and, and I believe he died, I believe he actually passed away, as a vegetable. I mean, he just cooked his brain. There's, there's no, there's no, that's not prosperity or peace. That's not blessing. Hello? That's not good. God didn't make him do it. Amen? The prosperity of the Lord doesn't bring tragedy into your life. And so we have to understand, if we're going to walk this thing out, we walk it out inside the plan of God. Amen. We walk it out by doing it God's way. Amen. You don't control your money. God, you, 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 you can. You can do what you, with, what you want to do with it. But you better be smart enough to know that you've got to do with it what God's Word said to do with it. And have God in control of it, not you. People do it all the time. You get mad at the pastor, I'm taking my money and going somewhere else. What gave you the right to do that? Well, I can do whatever. Yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. But we have to walk in a covenant with God and obey God. We have to walk in a covenant with God and do it the way God said do it. Amen. And how God said do it is the way we're supposed to live. Can you say amen? amen. All right. And so here we have, the, he's, he says here in... Um, um, Hebrews 6, 14, and surely I will bless, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply, or increase, bless thee, and bless thee, and increase thee, and increase thee. So we have this prosperity covenant blessing promise. Let's go on back over here to Genesis chapter 3 real quick. I'm going to back up just a little bit from verse 29. That's a promise to the Jews. Verse 27. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In spiritual matters, there are no ethnic, gender, hello, or soci social barriers in Christ Jesus to the promises of God. Whether you're, whether you're a bond or free, you still... Um, you still qualify for the blessing of Abraham. If you're a male or man or woman, you qualify for it. If you're a Jew or Greek, you qualify for it. In Christ Jesus, there's neither socioeconomic, there is neither ethnic, and there is, there is um, neither gender separations on qualifying for the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be real blunt right here. We got a lot of churches that should have been preaching this a long time ago to their people instead of saying that some other race is keeping you from walking in the blessing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They should have been telling them it don't matter what the honky does, God will bless you yes, he will. Yeah. if you'll follow the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now. I know I've said, I've said these things over the years, and I know y'all love me. I'm just I'm blunt sometimes. And some people might think I'm too blunt. I don't care. I don't care if your boss is the, is the undercover Grand Imperial Wizard of the KKK in your area. You can walk in the blessing of God and either God will have to kick him out or put so much favor on you he does it and, doesn't even, and, and hates doing it, but he does it anyway. Amen. God, because God commands the blessing on you. God will command his blessing on you. And people will just have to do it because God commanded the blessing on you. And they might be doing stuff they don't want to do. Are you here? But they'll do it because the blessing's on them. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, my mic's a little hot in here, guys. Just bounce, kind of bounce off the wall. Just, there you go. That's, a little bit, that's all I need is that tweak. Hallelujah. Remember, look, look, well, it brings me to the next point. The Lord gave his covenant people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they gave them what they asked. Fear of God's covenant people fell on the Egyptians. Look at verse, uh, tw uh, Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. They didn't want to get them people that stuff. Yeah. They showed up at the door and said, I want your gold and your dresses and the jewelry. And they went... Okay, boom, 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 boom. Here. 
They didn't like the Jews. Yeah. Hello. And with all the plagues on them, they probably were madder and a, a hornet's nest at them. But when they walked up, favor was on them. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the grand imperial wizard of the KKK can't keep a black woman or a black man from walking in their prosperity covenant with God. I don't care where he is in the company. God will put favor on you, and he, they will do exactly what the command of the blessing says for them to do. Yeah, amen. Yeah. amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you might have some somebody that thinks you're just some dumb hick redneck. And you know, listen, I can tell you now nowadays we kind of got role reversals on some things. You got people in certain positions that that they're, they're treating other races bad because they've got they've arrived. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Don't we call up in that mess? Yeah. yeah I'm gonna get you back. Your your, your forefathers did such such. My forefathers. I got news for you. I've traced my family tree. We didn't have slaves. <laughs> my family tree didn't own slaves. Just because I'm white don't mean I own slaves in my family history. Yeah. Come on now. And you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, blacks, African Americans in our country who lived in free states whose families were never slaves. Yeah. Right. Now, how long are we going to keep this mess up of division and this, this mess of, of causing hate and racial hatred? And listen, using that in our churches to manipulate our people. And keep them bound, and all you're doing is prop pimping. You ain't nothing but a pimp if you're doing that. You're pimping your people for, for political power. Yeah. Ooh. Whoever you are, instead of teaching them how to prosper. I've watched people come out of debt. Black people, poor white people, you know, Hispanics. I've seen people come out of debt because they got a hold of the Word of God and they were taught that Abraham blessing belonged to them and they started acting on it and they started giving and they started, I, I, I'll never forget going and dedicating Montreal's house. Montreal didn't have a house, did you, Montreal? You lived in the projects. We dedicated her house. I don't, I, listen, I ain't talk about some old uh, shack they refurbed. I'm talking brand new, built from the ground up. Hallelujah. Brand new house. And we went and dedicated that house. You know, I tell you, you can, people can come out if they understand who they are in Christ and what belongs to them in Christ. And for Abraham, see, we can come out. We can come out of the ghetto. We can come out of the projects. We can come out of the, the poorhouse. We can come out of the, you know, the old country, you know, um, you know, three rooms in a path instead of three rooms in a bath. Y'all do know what that means, don't you? I ain't going to ask you how many of you ever used the outhouse before. I mean, it's not a pleasant experience. I don't care who you are. Hallelujah. But there's people who grew up with three rooms in a path and not three rooms in a bath. Amen. We need to teach people, and you need to understand, there is a promise in God's Word that will set you free. And I qualify to say what I said because I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost to say it. And you can't disqualify me because of the color of my skin. Hello. No more than I can disqualify you because of the color of your skin. Amen. White people can't, are not disqualified from ministering to blacks, and blacks aren't disqualified from ministering to whites. Amen. I know for a fact we've watched it happen. Taught people the Word of God. Preached them the Word of God. They acted on the Word of God and seen them come out. White, black, whatever, it doesn't matter what race, it works. Men, women, hallelujah, we've watched it work. Are you here? Glory to God. It work, The Word of God works. Why? Because it's a covenant promise. I said it's a covenant promise. Y'all mind if I get strong? I know if you're watching out there, if you don't like it, stay tuned. It's going to get better. I say these things in love. You get the idea that the gospel is all about this mushy-gushy, don't, don't challenge anybody and don't, don't ever address anything. That's hogwash. Paul got so upset about one thing, he turned the guy over to the devil. <laughs> For the destruction of his flesh, so his spirit be saved in the day of the Lord. That wasn't real mushy-gushy. Amen. Remember um, when God brought the people out of Egypt? We just read that we're reading that. But he brought them out with silver and gold, not one feeble one among them. Psalm 105, verse 37. 
He, he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And where did they get the silver and gold from? We just read that back over in Exodus 12, 26, or uh, 12, 36. They went to the Egyptians, people who hated them. They were their slaves. 400 years, they were their brick makers. They were just, they were people that they whipped and they beat and they used for labor. Hello? And those people showed it. I, I can't imagine they had time to get a bath and go to the door and ask for gold. They probably didn't smell all that great. And they went to the houses and, they, and the favor came on them. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at um, Psalm 105, verse 8. When is this covenant applicable? In our generation, praise God. All right. Psalm 105, verse 8 says, He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Now, if you took this a low number. If you took a generation at 44 years, some people estimate a generation at 44 years. Let's just say, we'll take 40 years. We'll go low. All right? Ah, we'll go low on that. Generation is 10 years. That's not, even, that's not feasible. We can't have babies in 10 years. All right. 40 years. 40, 40, 40 years. Thousand generations. Allow 20 years of overlap. That includes about 26 years between overlap. That's still 26,000 years when he made the promise. It hadn't run out. I said, now, all you hardcore people who believe in, you know, who, who want to argue about the Bible, the seven days of creation, and how the, the earth is only 6,000 years old, now I've just messed up your theology on God's stuff, God's words have been done away with on certain things. He, gave, he remembered his word, and he gave what he commanded to a thousand generations. Now, I just, on marginal terms, came up with 20,000 years. That means at least another 14,000 to go on his word being fulfilled. Hello, we're not even halfway there. Are you here? It says, he remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. We got to get back to believing that the Bible is the Bible. That God spoke it. It's active. It's working. I, when you go back and think about creation, when God said light be, light was, and you understand science has proven the universe is expanding in every direction at the speed of light from a single point. Why? Because God never said light stop. He said light be it still in obedience to that word, the universe is expanding. At the speed of light, because what? God is light. His word operates at the speed of light. Think about that. The Bible says Satan fell as heaven as lightning. It didn't say he was lightning, as lightning. Why? Because God cast him out with his word, and he went out on that word at 186,000 miles a second out of heaven. That's why it looked like lightning. It looked like lightning. It was, it was, it was him falling in, in off of that word of God at, at the speed of light out of heaven. I know we're getting kind of scientific-y, you know, anti-evolution talking here, but that's, I wasn't really trying to go there. Look at verse 42 of the same chapter. For he remembered his holy promise. Now you read this. You read all the stuff that happened in here. All the things that took place. And why they took place? He remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. And they brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. And he gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Notice that God brought them out and did everything. Why? Because he made a promise to Abraham. And hundreds of years after he promised Abraham. Hello? The Bible says he remembered his word. And he brought them out. Not only did he bring them out, verse 37 said he brought them out with silver and gold. There was no feeble one among them. They came out healthy and wealthy. That health and wealth gospel, well, God believes in it. 
That's that health and wealth bunch. Well, Psalm 105, verse 37. Yeah, that's Old Testament. Well, actually it says it was because he did, he remembered his promise to Abraham, and he said that the promise of Abraham was made to Abraham in his seed, and he said that Abraham's seed was not seeds as of many, but as of one, which is Christ. And then he said, if, you're, if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Amen. In your generation. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is a health and wealth God. They came out with gold and silver and no feeble one among them. And verse 42 tells us why. He remembered his promise to Abraham. Not only his promise, he called it the holy promise. He called it a holy promise. Doggy. That's enough to make you jump up and run around the church three times. Can you say amen? amen. Say, so can you say amen? amen? You at home say amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. God made a promise to Abraham, and then people went into captivity, and then after hundreds of years into captivity, he brings them out, but he brings them out wealthy and healthy, and then the Bible tells us why he did it. He remembered his promise. Glory to this is a different generation than Abraham lived in. Numerous generations later. And God remembered his holy promise to Abraham and delivered them healthy and wealthy. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And that same promise God gave to Abraham applies to you. Because I'm in Christ. And I now, because of that, I'm an heir. And that means that God will bring us, out, bring us out of whatever we're facing, healthy and wealthy, because he remembers his holy promise to our father Abraham. Amen. He is the father of our faith. God's word declares that he will bring us out of our dire situations. Hallelujah. He's not going to do for them what he won't do for us because it's not based on anything other than he remembered his holy promise to Abraham. They make you speak in tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I didn't know you spoke in tongues, Pastor. Oh, yeah. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, too. All right. They make you crazy for Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Th think about that. God remembered his word, his holy promise. Yes. And he said when he made the promise that he would bless his seed, he would bless him and his seed in their generations. Glory to God. And if you go back and say the whole thing, God heard their cry coming up, and he sent, a, he sent Moses to deliver them because he heard their cry. He was reminded. He was reminded. He was reminded. He could have just delivered them. They could have come out beat up, defeated, and poor. I mean dirt poor. But he had a promise that he made to Abraham. The promise of blessing and increase. Amen. Are y'all here? Galatians 3.14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Whoop, there goes that Jew thing. Whoop, whoop. There with the Jew thing. And I, I love the Jews. You understand? I love the natural Jews. We, we love Israel. But what I'm saying is the excuse that many in the church use if it doesn't belong to us is that it was for the Jews only. But God says here in Galatians 3, Christ being made a curse for us, for it's curses everyone that hangeth on a tree, that, the, that, in order that, for the purpose of, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, amen, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God, the third chapter of Galatians makes it abundantly, articulately, you cannot articulate it any clearer that what God promised to Abraham as far as blessing and increase belongs to the church. And you can't limit it. You can't limit it by dispensation. You can't limit it by someone dying, the last apostle. You can't limit it by an event, the canonicity of Scripture. You can't limit it. 
Because God said that promise was to the seed of Abraham in their generations. There's no limitation that people could come up with that's not, none of them are biblical. They're all made up. They just made them up. Yeah. All that stuff I just quoted is all made up stuff that men made up as an excuse not to have what God promised us because they didn't know how to get it. That's all I can tell you. They just made it up. There's nowhere in the Bible that says the canonized of Scripture will end all the blessing. He didn't do that anymore. Why? Wow, we have the canon of Scripture. Oh, the last apostle died. Hello? Oh, it was for the Jews. I just gave you enough Scripture to prove you none of those things apply. The blessing of Abraham is to come on the seed of Abraham in their generation, period. Well, I'm not a Jew. I, uh, do we have to go do it again? If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And? What does Galatians 3, 29 say again? And heirs according to the promise. That one verse alone is enough. We've given you others. Amen? I love this, I love that psalm, that, that, this passage in Psalm 105. He remembered his holy promise to Abraham. Amen? Hallelujah, his servant. And he brought forth the people with joy. And is chosen with gladness. Hallelujah. Oh my. Glory to God. Over in, uh, uh, you know, God remembers his covenant his son Jesus, meets our needs spiritually, physically, financially, as his very own sons. He can make favor abound to us in all circumstances. 2 Corinthians 9, I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 9, it says, And God is able to make all grace, that is every favor and earthly blessing, come to you in abundance. And it doesn't mean undeserved unmerited favor in this passage. It's not talking about that. All grace. It's talking, it actually, if you study this whole passage, this particular grace is talking about money. Yeah. This grace is talking about the, the, the money. It's, this grace is money. Come to you in abundance so that you always have, and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, that is, possessing enough to require no aid or support or furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. This grace is talking about money in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You read 2 Corinthians chapters, chapter 8, starting at even 7, getting over to maybe chapter 9. This passage, the, all the, the bounty, the grace is talking about, is all talking about money. God wants you blessed. Hello? Well, I'm not telling you, these preachers always talk about, my, listen, get over that stuff. Get over these people. Who, you know what? They'll get some dingling on there at 3 o'clock in the morning talking about you wanting you to send the money to buy some $19.99 piece of junk. And they'll double the order as long as you pay separate ship and handling. And, and people shell out the credit card and don't call them money grubbers because they're selling you junk. Hello? Y'all here? you going home? But let a minister stand up and say we need work, money for the work of God. And you know God wants to bless you and their money grabbing. Oh, they're all preachers are all like, all oh, they want your money. That's just a lie of the devil. I said, that's a lie of the devil. You better stop listening to people who listen to the devil. They want to shut down, and the devil just uses that, that kind of statement and that kind of mindset to shut down your door to blessing. That's all it's designed for. It is designed to shut down your door to blessing. By listening to that crud. Well, I know certain. Well, I can't, listen, you're always going to have bad apples. You got bad apples in the corporate world. You got bad apples in the uh, uh, whatever. I mean, every every everything you can think of has got people who are evil and manipulative. You gonna stop doing something? Good. How many are gonna stop going to, to a, a, a restaurant because you had one bad server? Hello? I just tell the owner and get, let them get rid of the server. You can't let one bad experience somewhere stop you from doing something. I've been in places before, had to go, go back again, you know, it was better just because it was, it, was, it was a person you had that day. Amen. Isn't that right? You don't, you don't not give because some preacher was, was a gimmick preacher. God, I mean, Paul talked about people whose gods were their belly and that kind of stuff. There are going to be people who, who only care about money. They don't care about people. But that, that shouldn't stop you. That don't, won't hurt you financially if you do what God says do. 
they can't stop you from being blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, if you're going to read 2 Corinthians chapters, um, I believe it does start in chapter 8 a little bit and then gets over into chapter 9 and um, kind of ends there in about down there toward the end of chapter 9. This is talking about the grace and this bounty are talking about money. The blessing is talking about money. God wants you financially blessed. Say, God wants me financially blessed. Yeah, it's a shame that in the church we should have to even say these things and argue the point to, to uh, combat or counterman people who preach that God doesn't want you blessed. Or idiot statements like God blesses certain people and not others. Yeah? And that while they write books of why you're supposed to be poor and get rich off the sale of the book. Now how dumb can you be to go buy that book? I'm serious. Preacher so-and-so said God wouldn't call him to be prosper, and he wrote a book on, what, on how to live poor. I'm going to buy his book. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's reminding me, it's 8 o'clock, that's reminding me that I'm supposed to make a video for Cindy Black's birthday. Hallelujah. Think about that. People, right, I remember years ago, I'm going to close right here, I am, I promise you. They had this guy out there, he, he, he got on that whole book, The Seduction of Christianity or something like that, and he was, you know, how the, all the, you know, the faith people and all the prosperity people were Eastern mysticists and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he got talking about the people who were getting rich off of it. He's writing books and going everywhere and preaching and getting rich off of preaching about not getting rich. And people just giving offerings and buying his materials and all this stuff. He's on all the on all the anti uh, victory talk shows. How you supposed to live defeated and poor and broke? And somehow or another, God blesses you if you're more hum you're more humble if you're defeated, poor, and broke. Biblical humility is submitting to what the Word of God says and doing it God's way, not man's way. Thank you for your enthusiasm. We will close on this positive note. God wants you blessed. But do you understand what I'm saying? Why would you go buy a book by somebody who says God's called them to prosper, but he's going to teach you how to be poor and enjoy it? Something's wrong with that picture. Hello? And it's a well-known guy. If I call his name, you don't, you'd know the name. But I'm not going to do it. Don't ask me after church, because I'm not going to tell you. But if you see a book that tells you how to be poor, just don't buy it. I can, listen, I'll tell you how to be poor. A little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands, and so shall our poverty come on day. <coughs> there you go. I mean, I'll just put that in book form. Get rich from telling how people how to be poor. That's all you got to do. There you go. All right. Praise God. Thank you for joining us tonight. Praise the Lord. Those of you watching by uh, internet, we, we thank you for joining in with us. And we, we encourage you to go visit our website www.fbc.org. You'll find a lot of material, our, our archive audios, our archive videos, information about our church, um, ways to be involved in us. If you want to connect with us financially, there's ways, there's, there's online giving tabs there. You can get involved that way. And, and uh, email us if you want to talk to us. And uh, just be a part of our ministry. We love you. God bless you. Until next time, remember that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith.